Kate, you know, uh, you know, we're in winter officially now. Officially, Matt. Officially. Officially, as of uh, yesterday, according to my calendar, which I trust. <laughs> and um, the best news, Kate, is that that means we have bottomed out as far as uh, lack of sun each day. So we'll getting we'll be getting more and more sunlight as time goes by. More and more. Yeah. So does that mean that you stop saying "ah oh, daylight savings" or? What? No, nah, I mean, I'm feel like I'm going to be stuck on daylight saving time probably until a week before we switch again. Oh, okay, you okay. Know, I have I still not adjusted appropriately. But uh, okay. no, I mean, I I don't want to confuse things by saying I just want to say that we'll be gaining daylight. You know, independent of daylight saving time, we'll be uh, gaining more and more day. I, I'm a fan of more daylight. In I am with you, a hundred percent. And I definitely feel like there have been years where I definitely get that kind of winter blues ish kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So far this year, especially considering, you know, there's been a lot of uh, abnormal stuff happening this year, Kate. Um, it's not been too bad for me. How about you? Uh, as far as winter blues, uh, I don't think they've gone lower than the 2020 blues. Um, I don't know. I huh. feel like most of my blues have been already in the year, so... I'm just maintaining maybe. a baseline, basically. Yeah, I, I don't know if I've got any blues left for winter blues. Um, <laughs> no blues to give. No blues to give. I've I've done giving all my blues. Yeah, I... Not yet, but give it time. Because I know that I just don't like those gray days, you know, where yeah. it's not snowing... It's not sunny. It's just gray. Woof. Yeah, there's... <laughs> um, there's. Sorry, I get so stuck on that woof. No, I'm sorry. I need to watch Home Alone this week. It's a good reminder. Thanks. Um, yeah, I think even if it is a little bit gray, I think just the fact that it's light out, if that makes sense, makes mm-hmm. a big difference. But I, I'm definitely with you. I would much prefer the sun be up. But, so... Uh, winter and winter sunsets are super pretty too. Yeah, why is that? Lots of pinks. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. If you were expecting a scientific answer there, Matt, you were left wanting. Yeah, you're right. I was kind of counting on uh, Kate the scientist to come out with something there, but uh because it's so pretty. <laughs> right, cuz it looks pretty. Well, is it because there aren't leaves on whatever trees? You're like, you more sun is peeking through trees where maybe it was hidden before? Or, or is it just something know. about the angle of the sun? I don't know. <laughs> the world may never know, Kate, I think is what we're learning. May never know. Yeah. You watched the Chiefs game the other day, Kate? I did. Okay. Did you see Tyreek Hill on the, uh, the stretcher? They were working on his hamstring and he was drinking something there. I missed that. Was it in the first half or the second half? Oh, gosh, Kate. Uh, making me think here. I think I'm it sorry. was uh, either the late late part of the first. It was either second or third quarter, I think. Okay. I so think. I did a lot of baking in the first um, okay. half. And so I finally got to sit down in the second half to watch. I mean, it was on. I was in the kitchen. I could see the TV, but I was... Yeah, so I I was not glued to the TV as much as I was listening. So, okay. what was he drinking, Matt? Um, he was drinking uh, what m- many people are now thinking. They're like, well, what is that? Is he drinking? You know, is he uh, is he got a shot of tequila there or something? What is it that right? he drinks? His little miniature bottle, and they're thinking that it was most likely pickle juice. Yes, I told you for cramps while he gets his hamstring worked on. Yeah. Yep. Pickle juice, pickle juice, pickle juice. Because yeah, it was this cute little bottle he was drinking out of. But uh, yeah, for anyone that's not familiar, Kate is a, kind of a pickle fiend, I would say. Mm-hmm. I do love pickles. More of a pickle enthusiast than uh, anyone I've ever, uh, I've ever talked to about it, at least. Mm. So there might be some closeted pickle enthusiasts that are in my friend circle that I'm not aware of. But uh, maybe. Yeah. Seems like you, uh, you're pretty dominant on it. Well, and I don't think people believe me when I say that they keep pickle juice on the sidelines at NFL games for that reason, for cramps. In this case, it was just so weird looking because he is face down on this stretcher looking thing. And they've got like this massage gun they're using on his hamstring. 
while he is awkwardly drinking out of this uh, tiny bottle of what apparently was pickle juice. Now, were you listening? Was it Tony Romo that said it's probably pickle juice? No, I just saw commentary after the game. Oh, okay. Someone on okay. Twitter posted something about it. Okay. Because I could see Tony Romo because he knows everything about football. He's like, oh, yeah, Jim, that's pickle juice. And if you're <laughs> a little stuffed up, you get a spicy pickle juice, too. And, you know. Yeah, I don't believe Romo made any commentary about it. He seemed kind of off his game, actually. There was, you know what? There was a couple of times where he said, I'm sorry, I meant to say Chiefs fan. Yeah, I agree with you. So, not sure what happened there. Tyreek Hill. It's so weird when they, and I don't want to get off on too much of a, a tangent here, but when they're playing games at a dome, you know, they're playing an indoor stadium mm-hmm. and they feel the need to point out the weather. I don't get it. I don't either. I missed that part. Yeah, Nance was all, oh, it's sunny here. And inside, we're, and it's like, oh. Well, was there an aerial shot of the city? Yes. Yeah, they do the aerial okay. shot of the dome that you cannot see into. Yes. And yes, the dome is surrounded by city. Well, okay. New Orleans. I just meant like if they were inside and said it was sunny, that'd be weird. But if there was an aerial shot, I don't know. I did pull it up, a picture of Tyreek Hill. It looks like a mini tequila bottle. Yeah, exactly. It looks like a little, little shot ski, pickle juice down the hatch. Uh, my brother who uh, does not like pickles, not one bit, not one bit at all. Um, he has lost his sense of smell and taste. And so they presume that he has tested positive, but he is also, uh, he was feeling really sluggish. And I'm like, this is the time, Michael. You can't taste it. Drink the pickle juice. You'll feel so much better. Okay. He didn't do it. He didn't do it. No? Ah. Uh. No. I'm like, of all the times to take advantage of eating something that's good for you that you don't like the taste of, do it to it. No kidding. So do you think... Yeah. With this pickle thing, is that something that he is just not liked since he was a little kid? Or Oh, yeah. I tried to okay. trick him into eating pickles since we were little. Yeah. Oh, yeah? How do mm-hmm. you do that? Close your eyes, take a bite. I promise you'll like it. I promise you'll like it. Oh, well, that's not tricking. I thought maybe got a sub sandwich and then sliced some well, uh, little strategic slits in the bread and snuck some pickle in there. I probably tried to put it on his bologna sandwich, but he wasn't having it. <laughs> Oh, good old baloney again. I know. I know. We were poor, Matt. It's fine. <laughs> I had to be like that, but okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure there's plenty of uh, wealthy people that enjoy baloney, Kate. Right. I mean, we're doing okay now, and we still buy baloney, so there's that. <laughs> yeah. You can take the kid out of the baloney, but you can't take the baloney. No, it's not going to work. The, no? Okay. That's weird. <laughs> Don't... <laughs> I didn't realize it was going to seem that weird when I started speaking. I know, right? <laughs> started out so innocent. <laughs> yeah. All right, Tyreek Hill drinking the pickle juice. Yep, so there you go. Pickle juice recovery drink. Uh, Kate had indicated before. Sorry, Kate, for uh, if it seemed like I doubted you. I don't think I was, though. I don't think you did. I don't think you did. Um, but yeah, indeed, professional athletes uh, will have pickle juice on hand to address cramping. So. Yeah. There we go. I think there are plenty of people who did doubt me. I don't know that you were one of them, but feels good to say I was right. So, Matt, I have told you that our apartment complex has a new uh, locker system at the clubhouse that they're trying to get the shipping companies like FedEx and, and the Postal Service and Amazon to come to the clubhouse and to put the packages in lockers instead of just leaving them in the lobby at the apartment, right? Yeah. Okay. So that's great during business hours. But after business hours and on the weekends, they can't get into the clubhouse to get in these lockers. So what do they do? They still leave packages in the lobby. Or if they can get in, sometimes they're dropped off by your front door. Oh, so they can still get into the lobby even though the office is closed? Well, like the lobby of the apartment buildings, if that makes sense. So there's like a double door. You walk in from the from the outside, and then there's like a little lobby, gotcha. and then there's the secure door that yeah. you've got your fob to get in. So a lot of time packages are in between the two doors. So like anybody could walk off the street and see packages and grab them. But for the most part, 
people leave other people's packages alone and you get your package and you go on your merry way. Uh, However, you know, it's the holidays and deliveries are coming later in the day. And we had basketball practice last night and all four of us were coming in from basketball practice and there's a package in front of our front door and it's a good size package, Matt. And guess what? That package is labeled for what is inside that package. So both of my children saw huh. what they were getting for Christmas. Oh, uh, great reactions. They were both like jumping around in the hallway and super <laughs> excited. And I'm like, that's the reaction I wanted. I just wanted it Christmas morning. <sighs> so I'm just warning you people out there getting packages that some of these packages are labeled. But I think what we're going to do is we're going to, because we try to convince them, it's just a box. It's just a box. And they're like, no, it's really in there. We say it's labeled. What What do you mean? It's not like printed on the shipping pa- uh, shipping label, like contains Barbie accessories. Oh, yeah. Or yeah, it does. It says Barbie Dream Plane. Even though it's not like, it's not the actual box that the, it's not the retail box. It's the shipping no, box. It's the shipping box. Wow. Okay. Yeah. But they did get a, whatever, the Barbie RV. And it is like the retail box. So if they would have seen me pull that in, that would have been a big, just as big of a bummer because they'd be like, oh my gosh, we're getting the Barbie RV. So I had to wrap that one up pretty quick. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to take the gift out of the box and put like um, the pajama pants and maybe a couple of books in the big box. And so when they open the big box, they'll be like, what? And that it was the Barbie dream plane. <laughs> and then I'll have to like pull the dream plane out from Ta-da. underneath the bed. I know. Like, see, I told you it was just a box. And wait a few hours. Oh, gosh, that's even. <laughs> so one kid gets the RV and the other kid just has books and pajama pants for a couple hours. And that'd be kind of fun, right? Right. Yeah, Christmas to remember. I know. I'm just so annoyed. Like, it's not the retail box. And it says Barbie dream plane. But the other item came in the retail box, but you just happened to get it before the kids could see it? It went to the locker system. Uh And I didn't have the kids with me, so I was able to get the package and then wrap it, and then I picked the kids up from school. It sounds like these lockers should live in the lobby then, right? You would think. You would think. And there's no way they have enough lockers for as many apartments as they have. So... All in all, it's a good idea except for at Christmas because there's no way there's enough room for everybody. Right. Even in non-trying times. Even in non-trying times. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see. And I sent a bunch of Christmas presents to my mom, which sounds really nice, except for I wanted them here. I forgot to change the shipping address. And the last time I sent something through this retailer, I sent something to my mom. Oh, okay. So my mom is now sending. It's like the cycle of shipping. She had to send them to me. Ugh, it was a whole thing. I can't believe I did so it. So you bought a gift to your mom and inadvertently mailed it to her. No. And then asked her to mail it back to you. Oh, no, it's not for her. I bought gifts for the kids. Oh, gotcha. And they, yeah, and she was really, she's been waiting for a package from the same retailer. So she saw <laughs> there were two shipments. So the first shipment, she was like, yay, it's here. And she's like, what? This is not. And then she saw my name on the shipping. So she's like, doggone it. And then the second package came and she got really excited. And she's like, nope, not me either. So she got those sent to me. So they are in transit to me again <laughs> or for the first time. You have any concerns about things not making it to you in time, Kate? A little, a little bit, but I've got some really obnoxious boxes that I'm taking to the post office today. Oh. That if they get to there by Christmas, it's okay. If they get there by like Saturday or Monday, that's okay too. But they're, they're kind of obnoxious boxes. So, and you're going to the post office with them? Yes. Oh, wow. Okay. What do you think? Do you think I should do UPS instead? That might be smart or another shipper. 
if it were me, yeah, just to avoid potential lines or whatever at the post office, yeah, I feel like I would go to like the UPS store or something like that, ship it from there. Look at you, smarty pants. Yeah. Remember, I worked at mailboxes, etc. when I was in high school for a year, right? No. Okay, let's talk about your resume here, Matt. Mailboxes, etc. Uh-huh. McDonald's, Radio Shack. Yes. What else? Uh, I worked at Gear for Sports doing data entry over a summer once. Oh. Um, the Apple Store. Worked there for a few years. Yeah, I knew that. Um, Where else? A lot of places, it seems. A few radio groups, clearly. Right. Right, clearly. Uh, Best Buy? No, never worked at Best Buy. No. Circuit City? No, I think... The entirety of my re- retail is Radio Shack and Apple. Okay. And then maybe if you count UPS store slash mailboxes, et cetera, as retail. But. Wowzers. What a well-rounded resume you have. Oh, thanks, Kate. Yeah. Yeah. Well done. Okay. So now I, uh, I, know, where I'm, I'm, I know what I'm going to do because the parking's a lot better too. So I'm not going to need to make two trips in with all these obnoxious boxes, like they'll be able to let me bring my packages. Oh yeah, Matt, good call. Gosh, you're so helpful. Well, if it doesn't show up on time to its destination, you're not going to hold that against me, right? No, 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 no. I just want to get them out. Get them out. I did get a a gift in the mail over the weekend uh, from one of my friends who is just the sweetest friend ever. But at the same time, when I saw it in the mailbox, I was like, Man, she beat me to it because I had already started putting her present together. So now do I look like I sent her a present just because she sent me a present? Because it's going to come days later. Oh, yeah. But I just, I was stuff, I had to wait till I had all the baking stuff done. I don't think so. I, I think you're okay. I hope not. Well, you're, you're before Christmas, right? I hope so. Oh, man. Yeah, it, there is a, a pre- someone's like, hey, here you go. I made you some cookies. And it's like, yeah don't really plan on making anything in return yeah but i will go ahead and consume these cookies and tell you they tasted good oh uh, matt i hope that when you i, I made you a plate <laughs> and when you see my cookies you're gonna go these don't look right and i'm gonna say i know matt but they're gonna taste good and maybe have a glass of milk with you because i don't know if i've made it very clear how much i hate the oven in the apartment, but I hate the oven in the apartment. Oh, no, I don't think so. I don't think I've... No, uh, I have had... I'd have two cookie sheets of, like, these beautiful cookies, and then I'd have two cookie sheets of these, like, crunchy cookies for the same time, for the same temperature. It's just so annoying. So I've had to put notes in with the cookies going, uh, they are tasty. They're not the prettiest. A little hard. Have a glass of milk with them. Oh, my gosh, Kate. So... I don't think anybody's going to break a tooth. And they've got good flavor. So how do you decide who gets a regular cookies and who gets nice ones? I just started bagging them. And then I was just randomly grabbing bags. So, but you know what? And it's a recipe I've made before. So it's not like it's a new, I did have a big old Pinterest fail. But this one was not it. It was a white chocolate cranberry oatmeal cookie. Okay. So good. good. Yeah. So good. Um, yeah, some of them look like nuggets and some of them look like cookies and they're all tasty, but my Pinterest fail, Matt, I was so mad. You didn't take photos and put them on your, on your board. I should have. I really should have. So I found, I wanted to do something different than white chocolate pretzels. I had a bunch of pretzels and I wanted to do something different and I found Buffalo pretzels. So you take like buffalo sauce and you toss them in the pretzels and uh, there's some onion powder and some garlic powder and uh, some special seasoning. And I was making the sauce and then I was tossing the pretzels and it smelled so good. I'm like, I'm going to dip these pretzels in ranch. This is going to be fantastic. They burnt. The time they told me to do and tossing them every 10 minutes in the oven, they burnt. And they didn't have good flavor, like even the ones that didn't burn. I was like, it just tastes like a pretzel. It doesn't taste like buffalo. 
I was very disappointed. Yeah, so you was this just buying like a traditional bag of pretzels that you would get yeah, off the just shelf? Pretzel sticks. Yep. Okay, pretzel and, sticks. And then you cook them again even though they're already cooked. Yes, because you want to bake the flavor onto the pretzels. Gotcha. You know, like uh, Chex Mix? So People you cover these things. Bake in... Chex Mix? I guess I didn't know that. Okay. I make firecrackers and you bake those too. Firecrackers, is that crackers oh. that have a bunch of uh, crushed red pepper on them? Crushed red pepper and ranch and a little bit of oil. But it's like all the Cheez-Its, uh, some Bugles. Um, yeah, I've had those before. That's really good. Yeah. Yeah. Or I've had the ones that are just crackers, a thing of crackers and it's all covered in that. But. Yeah, super yummy. But yeah, you bake those too. But yeah, you just bake them a little bit for to let the seasoning set. But this said 30 minutes tossing every 10 minutes. And I did that. But I essentially bought a bag of pretzels and threw them away because they were bad. Well, pretzels aren't too costly. At least it wasn't no. caviar or something. I don't know. True, true, true. It was just, you know. I could have gone with tried and true white chocolate. Yeah. And instead, tried something new. Yeah, I've never tried something like a buffalo infused pretzel. Me either. Or maybe you've had buffalo flavored chips or something. Surely I have. I make a really good buffalo dip. Yeah? That's like chicken wings in a casserole dish, and it's so cheesy, yummy, good. And yeah. if you eat it with celery sticks, it's super low carb. But I usually go to a bag of tortilla chips. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds pretty good. The celery, especially. I'm a big fan of the uh, celery that comes with buffalo yeah. wings. Give me more, more, more of the celery. I know. I'm with you. Are you blue cheese or are you ranch with wings? Uh, I don't go nuts with the with the dipping of any of the stuff, but I go with uh, blue cheese. I try to stay traditional with it. And that's been an evolving thing, too. You know, initially it was ranch, but then uh, I think the traditional way to do it is blue cheese, right? I think that's the stupid way of doing it. So I don't know if it's traditional, but huh. blue cheese. I'm so, this is my standard answer. I'm so glad that you like it. May I have your side of ranch and you can have my side of blue cheese. <laughs> when they give you both at restaurants, I'm like, you can have the blue cheese. I'll take the ranch. Thank you. Well, I can only do – my tolerance for a lot of ranch is a lot higher than it is for a lot of – blue cheese is pretty rich, I feel like. Mm. Um, especially like blue cheese crumbles or whatever. I can only take so much of that. Um, but it does seem to – I don't know. It, it seems more appropriate for the wings. And once again, I'm not big into dousing the wings in ranch because I feel like I'm, in a certain way, you're kind of dousing a lot of the heat with that ranch right. or blue cheese, right. you know? Right. I worked at a restaurant that almost every meal came with a salad and blue cheese crumbles were an option. And every time somebody would ask for blue cheese crumbles, I'm like, I'm not sure if we have enough or I'd be like, let me see. I know we were running low earlier, so I'd try to get out and then they'd be like, oh, no worries. I don't need them. Yeah, I'd try to get out of putting blue cheese crumbles on people's salads because it grossed me out. Wow. Okay. I know. It was like the texture of it or just the smell? Oh, the texture, the smell, getting it on okay. your fingers. Yeah, because it is Ooh. pretty aromatic. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, so it didn't work every time. All right, so so far your entire, it seems like it hasn't been a catastrophe, all the your uh, Christmas time treats. You just have no. some malformed and some overcooked cookies? Yeah, some, oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know if I bought enough treat bags. So right now my dining table has just got like containers waiting for treat bags, waiting for treats to be put in the treat bags. And yeah, there's a couple that um, <laughs> I've never made peanut butter balls. So I made those uh, last weekend and I learned really quick to not make them so big because they look like great big barbecue meatballs they <laughs> like they they did not look as appetizing so i started making smaller <laughs> peanut butter balls and we kept the big ugly ones for ourselves that was another <laughs> thing we've got like a container in of these aren't going to our friends these are staying for us 
So. Yeah, you really make a good point there. You don't want something, you don't want to mislead people into thinking that they're going to be eating one thing and then it's something different. You know, right. even though they would see, okay, they sent me meatballs through the mail or do you send these through the mail? I am sending them through the mail. Yeah. Okay. And it's like, well, I know it's kind of chilly out, but I don't know if it's chilly enough to count on meatballs being okay for that journey. <laughs> right. Right. Why do these meatballs taste like peanut butter? That's weird. Right. Yeah. So, yes, just remember when you get your little plate of goodies that you're like, okay, it's the thought that counts and they may be ugly, but they taste good. Oh, or yeah, sometimes you just throw the ones that are no good into the trash or the ones that you like. You keep, and then you throw the ones that you're kind of meh on into the trash. So That's right. You know, um, I've had ones before. It's like, I can't believe I'm wasting precious calories on this particular cookie, you know. (laughs) And it's still okay. It's still better than, I don't know, eating something healthy. still tastes better than that, but the the trade-off isn't quite there. You know, the calorie slash carb hit rate to taste ratio uh, it doesn't quite cut it, you know? Right. Right. All right. Well, I'm glad that made sense. I got it. I sometimes don't have the presence of mind, though, where I'm like, well, I'm halfway into this cookie. I might as well finish it. Even though it tastes like garbage. <laughs> or not, but not like garbage, necessarily. Or not as good as the, cal- like you said, the precious calories. Like, I could have had two of the other ones instead of having the semi-good one. Yeah. Yeah, I had some cookies over the weekend, though. I was like, ah. I, I regretted it after the fact. I was like, that totally wasn't worth it, but whatever. What's done is done. That's, that's what I say a lot. At least it was the weekend and not a weekday. Uh. <laughs> right. Although you kind of want to spend, yeah, you want to spend your empty calories in a more epic fashion on the weekend. Not on meh kind of cookies, but whatever. Right. Yeah. So because I did all that baking, though, over the weekend, like Sunday night, we're sitting around and I'm like, I want something sweet but i didn't want anything that i had made so uh elliot and i sat in the chair and we shared a grapefruit and then it was like oh that was a really good grapefruit you want another one so we had two grapefruits (laughs) essentially she had one and i had one because we shared each one but uh it was just like a super full feeling after we finished these grapefruits, but it was like, okay, it already had enough peanut butter and chocolate and sweetness for the day. Well, grapefruit's kind of like watermelon where it disappears a little bit. Not quite like watermelon, but mm-hmm. don't you think it kind of disappears into your stomach pretty quick? I hope so, because I was uncomfortable for a little bit. So it was like, okay. Oh, okay. Well, maybe not. I, we've got some really good grapefruits and they're huge. And then we also peel our grapefruits kind of OCD-ish. So oh. it takes forever to get to the grapefruit. Yeah. How do you, how does that work? Can you explain that or we no? We just eat the fruit. So like we peel the individual boats and then we peel off the peel on the boats. So as if you were making a fruit salad or something as opposed to eating wedges of it? Correct. Okay. Correct. All right. That's not that weird. That's not as... I get lots of looks. Each one has to be perfectly spherical. Each piece of grape, grapefruit has got to... No, but they're, we don't like the, the, the skin. The rind, not maybe? The, peel, the rind, yeah. So there's a whole lot of mess after we're done eating grapefruits. Okay, do you, what, what do you eat along with your grapefruit, or do you put salt or pepper or something on grapefruit? Don't people dole up grapefruit in interesting ways? I think people put sugar on grapefruit. Really? Oh my gosh, yeah. just additional sugar on there? Yeah, like they cut it in half, and they put a little sugar, and then they eat, they even have like grapefruit spoons where you can like get the grapefruit out that way. Sure, yeah. Yeah. I don't do it that way, but. That's how I've seen it. I've seen the spoons with a knife built into them, but I haven't witnessed yeah. someone pour sugar into a grape. Isn't the grapefruit already pretty sugary? No, it's just like you you like just sprinkle it. Well, if it's too acidic or if it's too... Okay. Sour um, or something? Sour, yeah. Gotcha. It's kind of trying to even it out, but I don't think it's like a lot. I think it's just like a little sprinkle Am on Am I the wrong top. thinking that some people put pepper on grapefruit? I've never heard of that. I've heard people Black put pepper, pepper on... Um, Cantaloupe. Maybe that's it. That's probably what I'm thinking of. Yeah. I put salt on my cantaloupe. I put salt on my watermelon. Yeah. So that's what I'm thinking of. 
Not always. Seems like grapefruit. Like it has to be the right one. Seems like grapefruit would be it's a similar family, but maybe not. Huh. Okay. Yeah. Learning a lot here today. Learning, learning, learning. Well, that's good. I mean, it's interesting because you're like, hey, I don't know if I want to have any of these sweets we made. I'm like, oh, what'd you do? I was expecting you to. Be- so we went to Dairy Queen and got a couple blizzards or something like that. But instead you had fruit, Kate. That's good. I did. I did. Yeah, I was expecting you to go get, yeah, go get a couple of uh, the, the old packages of the old little dubby uh, Christmas trees or something. Oh, I do love those. No, but you, <laughs> we are doing a Sunday bar for Christmas. I know you do. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, the Sunday Can bar. You you're using that? your yeah. You're using your leftover Halloween candy from the That's Halloween it. event that happened on Thanksgiving. Correct? Yes. Okay. And Halloween. <laughs> Oh, a combination of the two Halloween events left over combination. candy, which once again, yeah. I still applaud your ability to ma- maintain that candy hoard. Thank you. That candy stash. So. I think there was just an insane amount. So, yeah. All right. So what uh, kind of ice cream are we keeping around? Are we having around for this uh, ice cream sundae bar that's happening on uh, Christmas? I think we've got a vanilla. We've got a okay. uh, vanilla with a caramel ribbon. Mm. And right. I think there's a chocolate one. That those are your options. Pretty good. So, yeah, I you thought gotta so. have the vanilla for sure. I know my oldest is such a vanilla girl. Like we give her a hard time because we're like Finley. That's so vanilla. Not wow. just with with vanilla flavoring, just with her choices on things in general. Yeah. Oh, okay. oh yeah. She's yeah. She's like a vanilla outfit, girl. That outfit is so vanilla. You're so vanilla, Finley. No, she just likes things kind of plain Jane and likes things okay. the way she likes them. So, Well, with vanilla ice cream, when you're infusing a bunch of Halloween candy into it, <laughs> especially if you're putting like Starburst or something in there, you know. Uh, ew. Yeah. Ew. I hope not. Because Starburst, even if they're from, like, even if they, if you just bought them yesterday, they're still mm-hmm. a little hard. Yeah. But if they're Halloween Starburst... Break a tooth, and then they're frozen or like on the ice cream. Oof. Yeah, yeah. Break a tooth. Now I deliberately chose that because I didn't think that would sound very good in ice cream. Okay, thank you. Now the chocolate ones, because you're potentially throwing a lot more chocolate into chocolate, so you're making a really chocolatey sundae. Yeah, That's Monty gets the uh, chocolate blizzards. So, man, look at Monty go. Yeah, so we have to get the chocolate ice cream there. I don't think I would ever think to order it that way. Yeah. Huh. I used used to like Reese's Pieces with chocolate ice cream. Yeah, in the blizzard. that sounds good. Yeah, yeah. Did you ever do uh, Baskin Robbins as a kid? Uh, yeah, we always got a free scoop for your birthday. And uh, my brother, who's right below me, we have summer birthdays, so we were always at Baskin Robbins in July, and I would get the bubble gum ice cream. And I would eat the ice cream and I would save my pile of the pieces of bubble gum. <laughs> oh, God. And okay. then I would eat all the pieces of bubble gum at once. I don't know how, A, my mom didn't get sick watching me. And I don't know how I didn't get sick afterwards, like just eating all that pink bubble gum ice cream and then having a pile of bubble gum like bigger than my mouth. Yeah, so you would... Save the bubble gum for the end? Is that what you mean when you say you'd yeah. save it? Not that you would save it for a day or something and then come back to right. it. Right. No, save it for after I finished my cone. Yeah. And then you would just consume the gum, just like what you would do on a um, no, a, a blow pop or whatever. Right. You don't. There's no way you're actually going to be able to blow bubbles with it. Right. It must be just consumed. It was just a giant wad of gum. Yeah, I don't remember it ever lasting very long. Yeah, it's pretty gross. Yep. Kudos to my mom for putting up with gross kids, because I don't know that I'd let my kids... Yeah, it sounds like such a waste of an ice cream trip, too. Just like, oh, really? Okay. You want bubble gum? Barf. Yeah. My mom was a lot nicer than I am. I'm not sure if it's still around or not, but did you have any familiarity with Maggie Moo's? Yes, I did like Maggie Moo's. It's ice cream joint where they... Had uh, it wasn't soft serve ice cream, maybe hard pack ice cream, and then mm-hmm. they would mush your uh, whatever candy infusion you want into the ice cream using the the uh, the ice cream scoop using the uh, blunt end of the ice cream or not the blunt end, but the the non scoop side of the right. ice cream scoop. Yeah, 
Cold Stone uh, Creamery does that too. Do they? Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. There is a, what's the new craze in ice cream right now? The, where it's uh, like the ice cream rolls. You know what I'm talking about? No. Where it's like it's shaved really, really thin and the way they do it, it like it curls up. I don't know how to, almost like, you know, a a snowball kind of gets bigger as you. Mm -hmm. um, Yeah, so it just curls over itself again and again and again. Yeah. So it kind of looks like a cinnamon roll. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, sure. So there's little packets of air between layers or something. Yes. Ice cream. I don't think that's what I mean. Rolled ice cream. Okay. Yeah, I'm not familiar. haven't had it. I think it's a big... I can imagine it being pretty good. Yeah. And you can get lots of uh, different flavors. And it's just real thin, so it's pretty and... Rolled ice cream. And there's a Pinterest, how you can do it, how to make two ingredient rolled ice cream. Thanks, real simple. Oh, I was trying to remember if I, maybe I didn't watch it. There was America's Test Kitchen on how to best scoop ice cream. Ah, I bet you I just didn't click on it. Best scoop ice cream? Yeah, how to most efficiently get ice cream out of a container. Okay. Using a scoop, yes. Using a scoop. Yeah. Like, I should have watched that for the show, damn it. And I would have had it for this moment. See? Man. Watching the wrong things. Watching too many of the Scientology things on YouTube, Kate. Another one popped up on me yesterday. Oh, yeah? And you watched it? Yeah. yeah. How many minutes? Oh, I actually... Was it like a two-hour episode? I fell asleep to it, but yeah, it was like long. It was like an hour and a half, something like that. This one was interesting. It was... Uh, Mike Rinder, who was a longtime Scientologist, I believe he was actually one of the key like villains in the, oh yeah, we need to stalk you for trying to leave Scientology kind of okay. group, you know, until eventually he left. And so it was him and a younger former Scientologist talking about growing up in Scientology as they both, both their families had joined when they each were like six years old, respectively. So anyway, I could have been watching America's Test Kitchen, but instead I watched Scientology stuff, so. So good, you fell asleep. <laughs> yeah. And you didn't have weird memories? No. Or not memories, dreams. Sorry. No. Slept no. fine. That's good. That's actually the perfect kind of thing to fall asleep to. It's just talking. There, there was This was made in this dude's kitchen just with a... He may have been made just by this dude because it was just one camera angle the whole time and they're just talking at this kitchen table. And so there weren't like high production value elements right. or things like that that might wake me up or interfere with sleep or anything. It was a pretty good uh, thing to fall asleep to. Right. Do the things that you watch before you go to sleep, do those ever affect dreams that you've... Yes. I can't... I wish I could recall a specific okay. thing, but I know that, yeah, that has happened. I don't dream too awful much or remember my dreams, I should say, so that no one comes at me and says, well, actually, you know, you're dreaming all the time. <laughs> um, I don't typically remember my dreams. Uh, okay you yes i feel like and sometimes i don't remember them right away that something happens later during the day and i go oh wait i had a dream about this and i'm trying to piece it together like a memory so it's interesting sometimes i i I know what i'm watching i'm like well this is definitely going to affect my sleep tonight (laughs) sometimes i'm surprised that it doesn't and sometimes i'm surprised that the things that I dream about do affect my sleep. So, Oh yeah. Where you wake up and it's like uh, something that's uh, startling or horrifying or something or what? Or just like, okay, I'm like what you like, I'll watch. Um, I'm trying to think of a documentary that I was watching that was like, okay, this will be good to fall asleep to because it's just people talking. And then I'm waking up and I'm like, did, was I in the documentary? Did this happen? Am I, was this part of my life? Was yeah, so trying to figure out, like, the dream that I had that was affected by, as opposed to, like, scary movies where I'm, okay, now I'm going to have scary dreams. Great. Now I'm going to be chased by a serial killer. Yeah. You ever question reality? You're like, did I dream that? Or yes. is that real life? Is that what you were kind of indicating? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Oh. I think that's where those kind of deja vu moments kind of occur for right? you. Yeah. Right? 
It's like, oh, I actually dreamt this before. Weird. I've been here before. 